Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the MKM Knives Makita, which is also, I think, a division of MKM or something along those lines. This is the Malga 6, M-A-L-G-A number 6. Um, first off, though, I want to thank very much my buddy Chris for sending this guy along. Um, I appreciate getting a chance to take a look at it. I'm always curious about, you know, new approaches, especially to uh, old standards, so to speak. So uh, thanks for that. Next thing, let's do some size comparison real quick. I'll go ahead and I'll open the knife blade up here, and we can put this guy next to your Spydeco Delica. So we see in terms of sharpened blade length, these guys are almost identical. Here it is against the Ontario Rat number no. 2 and the Spydeco PM2, which is slightly off the screen there. But we see here, uh, again, not a huge knife here, but again, very similar in length to the, uh, the, the, the rat there. So there is your size comparison, and actually, while I'm doing slip joints... I might as well include the very best slip joint of all time. And that would, of course, be the Nick Shabazz Edition Blade HQ Victorinox. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Um, so uh, right here, we've got uh, the, 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 the MKAM here. Let's talk about what tools are in here. I mean, to start with, we've got this little guy right here. This is a blade, and it is made of M390 blade steel, which is one of the very best blade steels out there in the, uh, the, the cutlery world at the moment. Next thing here, we have a fork, although technically there were three times, so this would be a threek. Um, but th 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 there is that. We have a uh cap lift or i'm sorry this would be a, a can opener of some variety or another with a little bit of this isn't quite shopping but a little bit of something going on there and then we have the um the little cap lifter as well as uh, a flathead screwdriver then on the back side here we have a uh good old-fashioned corkscrew well, actually, I don't know if it's old-fashioned or new-fashioned. I don't follow the history of corkscrews particularly. And then this kind of thing, which is sort of an all-ish affair. Uh, so anyways, there you go. And then finally, um, uh, two things. Uh, this is by MKM. Uh, also, Makita. I don't know exactly what the difference between MKM and Makita is, but it's Maniago Knife Makers. These are a bunch of folks who are based out of Maniago, Italy. And they've kind of come together to do what appears to be some kind of a cooperative or another. But um, they, 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 they have banded together for marketing purposes uh, and created this. And then this particular piece is made by one of the subgroups there, which is Mercury Knives, uh, which is actually not really a company I was super familiar with before this, but um, they seem to be doing decent enough work here. And then finally, this is going to be a quick review. So let's go on ahead and talk about what I'm liking about this guy, what I'm not liking so much. Good side. You know what? Nice looking tool. It's got a lot of, bell you know, uh, there's something to be said for this micarta looking stuff here. I assume this is actually my Carter. But it's nicely oiled. It's nicely done. It's got a kind of an OD look to it. Um, and it, it's overall, it's pretty attractive. And couple that with a, a pretty aggressive stone wash on the blade here. It, it has a very no nonsense sort of military, uh, military aesthetic there. So definitely, this is going to be something that's going to look pretty nice, and I think is going to be relatively unintimidating to a bunch of folks, just because it is that sort of military aesthetic. So that's good. Next thing, um, this guy actually has some uh, safety margin if you properly hold it. What I mean by that is there's this little unsharpened kick plate down here, and this is meaning that if you're holding it properly and you're choked up pretty good, this is going to have a trouble shutting on your fingers. Even though this is a slip joint, even though there, there is a relatively weak back spring here, with no half stop or anything, although there is kind of a half slow, I guess um, it's not going to be closing on your fingers anytime soon, so that's good. Next thing, this does have a lot of the same charm as a Swiss Army knife, and I think for a lot of people it's going to have a very similar appeal. If you are interested in a Victorinox style thing, this is going to be a pretty solid choice for you if you're looking for something a little bit different. Next thing, this guy is going to be very easy to rescale. The reason I say that is because of these Torx bits right on the outside here. I'm going to see if I can pop these guys loose uh, mid-review here. These Torx bits are not actually holding the whole knife together. Um, although it looks like you might be able to pop out the, uh, the, the, the pivots for both sides here, in practice, they are pinned on this side. Uh, the, the, these, this middle bit is pinned, so you are not able to dis, uh, disassemble this guy straightforwardly. If you're willing to put these pins, you know, take the pins out and push them back through, then I guess, sure, the world's your freaking oyster. But at the same time, um, don't anticipate taking this guy apart for maintenance in the classical sense, but what it does mean is that this is going to be very straightforward to put new scales on. You could send these scales off to somebody, and they could probably make you a new set uh, pretty regularly out of any material you'd like. So this gives you the opportunity to customize this piece in a way that I think is going to be much more uh, straightforward than with a completely pinned sort of Victorinoxy affair. Oh, let's see if I just made that too tight. 
I sure did. The downside to this not being pinned on the other side there is if you tighten this too much, then yeah, there we go. That's better. Anyways, uh, it, it can go a little too tight, but anyways, it's going to be easy to rescale this guy. And then finally, on the good side, um, probably the thing I like most about this guy is the blade. This is a relatively thin chunk of M390 here. It comes down to a very thin edge here quite respectable and uh, overall it's it's nice it's it's reasonably sharp i am uh, uh, it's a nice little blade here it is, you see victoradox it's not that hard to do an m390 blade right um and i very much like seeing a swiss army style knife with a steel that is worth a damn um that is something that the market is very very sorely missing and i think this is going to provide a compelling alternative to somebody who wants that kind of a thing but isn't willing to reshop it every 10 seconds so um to me at least all that is the good is that it's got a thinly ground m390 blade it's going to be very easy to rescale because of these uh unscrewable sides here um it's got a lot of the same charm as a swiss army knife and uh, frankly just general good looks here and it does have some margin of safety if you hold it right on the bad side price is okay it's 109 bucks that's not terrible given m390 and whatnot but it is more than twice the price of similar items from victorinox um you know having a, a real steel in there is absolutely amazing but it does come at a cost that's for sure Next thing, like I said, this doesn't take all the way apart. Generally speaking, that's fine. Look, you can wash these guys out without too much trouble, but, uh, yeah. Uh, you definitely, uh, don't buy this thinking, oh, great, I can take it apart, I can swap in another blade, I can do all the... No, not straightforwardly. Uh, that, that's not a thing. Next thing, the all on this guy is a little weird. Uh, what I mean by that, I guess you could call this weird all. Like we at all Yankovic? No, 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 Yankovic. I don't even know how he pronounces his name. Anyways, I digress. Um, in a lot of these guys, you'll see that this bottom part here is kind of, there's a sharpening to it. There's a little bit of something to help. Um, but that's not the case here. Instead, this is really a, this needs, the hole needs to be already cut because this is a relatively, you know, a pointy tip here, but it's not actually sharp. The hole's going to need to be cut. So it's fine. It'll work as an all, but it's not exactly going to, uh, this feels kind of like a bit of an awkward tool. And speaking of which, the fork is a super awkward tool. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this uh, pry, uh, spudger tool here to pop this guy open because this has got a very strong spring and it eats fingernails for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But this includes a fork for some reason. And I don't understand exactly why this fork is here. I mean, it's hard to get out of there. I feel like they could have gotten a lot more mileage out of another tool choice, right? I feel like there were a bunch of things that they could have very easily done, even just like a micro flathead driver or something like that. That that could have been a lot more interesting than just putting in a random thin, thinly tined fork, really? Um, that, that just strikes me, you know, sure, I imagine it, there's probably a tradition. And in fact, I'm going to have 50 people in the comments, oh my God! God, Dick, this is a throwback to the... But I, I don't know that tradition, and therefore, to me, just for everyday carry... Especially when this is up against your knife and up against the inside of the liner here. I'm not sure that's something I'm going to be putting in my mouth on a regular basis, right? So, um, that, that, that's kind of thing. Next thing, this remains a non-locking knife. Um, and it is very, very much a nail neck knife. I, now I know this is a Swiss Army style knife. And, you know, for somebody who doesn't keep long fingernails, it's of limited utility just generally. But, uh, you know, this is going to have some of the downsides of non-locking knives. Like I said, it's got some margin of safety there. But, uh, there's a reason that knives lock, right? It is a safety feature, fundamentally. Uh, and so I, that's definitely something I do miss. And then finally, on the bad side, there is no clip on this guy. And that, to me, you know, look, uh, Historically, traditionally, yeah, absolutely, these are clipless. Um, that's the thing. But the problem is you've already got a screw right here, right? How difficult would it have been for them to include a, a, a clip for this guy and then a slightly longer screw that he can just go in through there, right? That would be beautiful. That would make this guy, that would give it a whole new dimension and make this something that's a little bit more unique, a little bit more interesting. Um, they, it's so ready for a screw, but they just, or I'm sorry, for a clip, but they just didn't do it. Or even, even better, have one of the clips that kind of goes into the inside of the scale there and then it goes in that way. That way it's bilateral. It's, there are so many ways they could have done that, but they just chose not to for some reason. And so I, I really wish that they would have taken advantage of the fact that this is a little bit less traditional and, and played into that strength and just thrown the clip in there. 
would have been great. So to me, all that is the bad is that there is no clip. It remains a non-locking knife with Nail Nick City, if you don't like those. Uh, well, <laughs> it's Nail Nick City, even if you do like them, right? Um, the uh, fork on this guy is a little bit weird. The awl is weirdly done. It doesn't actually take fully apart here, and the price is a little bit on the higher side. Look, final conclusions. This is another option in a Swiss Army knife style tradition, right? It's got attractive looks. It's got decent safety, classic charm, an M390 blade, and a very, very easy to rescale sort of approach. It's it's pricey. It doesn't take all the way apart. Some of the tools are weird. It's still a slippy in Nail Nick City, and there is no clip here, but overall, it's not a bad duel. I mean, for me, it's an easy pass, right? I, I hate Nail Nicks. The only kind of Nick I like is this one, and even still, I'm a little bit mixed feelings, right? Um, it, 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 This is definitely... I'm not a fan of that. It is still non-locking. There's still no disassembly. Look, Swiss Army knives have never really been my scene. I acknowledge that there are folks who bring who get a lot of joy from them, but for me, it, it just it's not a thing. But at the same time, time, I do see a target market here. I do see somebody who could be after this. You have to be after a Swiss Army Knife style knife, but you have to want some slightly improved steel. And, you know, look, it, no matter what the quality of the M390 is, it's gonna beat the Victorinox steel, right? We Let's be real here. That is a steel that you buy because you love shopping and want to do it every damn day. So if you want a better steel, yeah, that's gonna be an, an improvement there. And Or you maybe want something that's a little easier to swap out the scales. You want to be able to do something a little bit different, a little bit interesting with that. And in this case, this provides you a really compelling option. So if all of that is what you're after, then you know what? I, I can see this being an amalgamation of really good things for you. Uh, but otherwise, <laughs> it is what it is. Hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.